Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 4th, 5.56 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. July corn futures up two and a half cents at 7.95 and a half. December corn up one and a half at 7.36 and three quarters. July soybeans up two and three quarters at 16.33 and a quarter. November beans up two and three quarters at 14.81. July Chicago wheat up seven and a half at ten fifty three. July Kansas City wheat up eight cents at eleven dollars and three quarters. July spring wheat is up six and a quarter at eleven sixty one and three quarters. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, uh, like these videos, leave me a comment, let me know what sort of planting progress is occurring in your area. If you need some additional assistance from me, guys, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service. My premium subscription get a ton of information direct from me every single business day, morning emails, text message service, subscriber only videos. As I mentioned yesterday, everything I do is mobile friendly. This stuff can all be read or watched on your cell phones. Uh, The videos are sent out via text message at midday. It's a one click deal. You click on it. There's the video. There's no login instructions, nothing like that. So if you're somebody who's on the go, not sitting in front of a computer all the time, uh, this will work out really well for you. I did a subscriber only video yesterday regarding the U.S. soybean balance sheet and some potential possibilities, you know, some different acreage scenarios, some different yield scenarios, different demand scenarios, try to uh, paint some price implications. So if you guys are interested in this sort of stuff, uh, give that premium deal a shot today. Rains have passed through the U.S. Corn Belt, at least for the moment. We've got a pretty blank-looking radar here this morning, barring a small system over, say, western Nebraska, a part of South Dakota, but pretty dry here, generally speaking, this morning. You will see rains return to Oklahoma and Kansas uh, beginning today and tomorrow, and those rains will work their way kind of through the the, uh, Corn Belt. They'll work their way through Missouri, through Iowa, uh, through Illinois, Indiana, Ohio by, say, Friday, Saturday, Uh, this week. So over the next seven days, accumulation for most of the Corn Belt should be one inch or less. And there's going to be some areas locally, like this part of central Illinois, uh, far southern Iowa, northern Missouri, that'll see more rain. But uh, generally speaking, an inch or less for most of the Corn Belt over the next seven days. Uh, Maybe just as important is that temperatures are going to warm up drastically uh, next week. Uh, Some of the models I was looking at this morning suggest that temperatures could be 20 degrees above normal by the middle part of next week for almost the entire Corn Belt. So next week uh, could potentially be a good week for U.S. corn planting. You know, if you're dry enough, you're going to have some warmer temperatures, certainly. So uh, this could be a positive for planting, which we know has been very slow up to this point. Spring plantings in Ukraine are about a third complete. The Ukrainian Grain Traders Union said this week that about 31% of expected 2022 acres have been planted. They are estimating spring plantings at 11.45 million hectares, which would be down about 25% versus last year. So we've seen a lot of estimates in regard to spring acreage. They'll be down 20%. They'll be down 30%. Everything seemed to fall uh, in that kind of range. A lot of debate about crop rotation, actual final plantings, export capabilities, uh, a huge question there. Analysts continue to suggest that grain storage will become a huge issue this fall, assuming that Ukrainian ports remain shut down. Ukraine is already sitting on a big glut of corn. They're soon going to have a winter wheat crop to harvest. And then you've got another corn harvest, of course, uh, this fall. So nobody is quite sure exactly how or where uh, this grain will be sent or stored, how this is going to work. It's, it's going to be a big uh, supply issue. Uh, in Ukraine, they're going to be uh, backlogged, and there's going to be grain in, in Ukraine that's just not available for shipment, and that's why uh, part of the reason why these prices have done what they've done, just the uncertainty regarding that entire situation, of course. Brazil is dry, and crop estimates are falling uh, in regard to that second corn crop. Well-followed crop scout uh, Dr. Michael Cordonier pegged the country's corn crop at 107 million metric tons, down sharply from his previous estimate of of 112. I told you yesterday that Stonex reduced their estimate, and they're at 116 and a half, so he is much more pessimistic in regard to Brazil's corn crop. Not much here in terms of relief for these second corn areas in Brazil. This is the next seven days, the Euro model, and uh, the GFS looks fairly similar. So USDA may update its production estimate as part of next week's report. They're usually kind of behind the curve in in terms of uh, what's actually happening in private estimates. They they tend to take their time with reductions. But in any case, we're absolutely losing bushels uh, of corn in Brazil. I don't know if you can say the same thing about the United States just yet. It's far too early. 
Natural, gra- natural gas prices have surged. Spot month futures traded their highest level since 2008 yesterday, rallying more than 9% at one point. Yesterday's high in the nearby June contract of $8.17 per million British thermal units was the highest trade since September of 2008. The EU is considering a sixth round of sanctions against Russia that could include the nation's energy products. In addition, U.S. production is down. Natural gas and storage is down like 21% versus the same period last year. Natural gas prices gained nearly 30% in April. They've started May on a very strong note. Traders will watch for early summer heat in the U.S. in addition to more policy news out of Europe. Uh, Today is Fed Day. The Federal Reserve will announce, in all likelihood, another rate hike at 1 p.m. Central following their monthly meeting. Traders generally expecting a half-point increase to the Fed fund rate after a quarter-point increase last month. This would be the largest uh, single increase since the year 2000. The Fed is also likely to announce plans regarding a balance sheet runoff. The Fed has accumulated nearly $9 trillion in treasuries and mortgage-backed securities in its previous quest to support the economy. They are now seeking to unload these assets, if you want to call them assets. Some might argue that financial markets have already discounted a great deal of what the Fed might do this year, while others brace for reduced economic activity and more downside in global equity markets. It's been a very, very bad start to the year uh, for the stock market, uh, both the U.S. and uh, globally speaking. Cattle market had an okay day yesterday, up in the fat cattle, up sharply in some of the feeder cattle contracts. Uh, There's a little bit of cash trade, not enough to establish a trend. Hog market got hammered again yesterday. Real ugly stuff there. I'm not sure if that has to do with the with the COVID issues in China, but I would imagine that's at least one of the uh, issues in the hogs. U.S. dollars a little bit lower. We've got the S&P up 16 points. The Dow's up 120 ahead of the cash open. The bonds are flat. Gold and silver marginally lower. Crude oil sharply holler, higher, up $3.70 at 106.11 in the June WTI. Have a great day today, guys. I will talk to you same time tomorrow.